ahead in the glass house. Hey, Kim, if you were in government, how would you feel about dropping your pants and bending over? That is the sort of thing I'd do in relation to the United States. <laughs> Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, as we approach the anniversary of Ned Kelly's death, if our greatest outlaw hadn't been hanged, would he have got back together with In Excess? <laughs> More news than dancing Democrats and ravaged Republicans this week. In Turkey, a few bodyguards might be looking for a new job after the Prime Minister collapsed and was rushed to hospital. When they got there, the driver and guards jumped out and slammed the doors, activating the automatic locking system <laughs> with the PM still inside. <laughs> the same thing has happened to our own Prime Minister, but only when Jeanette goes shopping <laughs> and she always leaves the window open and water in his bowl. <laughs> with the Turkish leader unconscious in the car, they eventually broke in using a sledgehammer. And it was a very touching moment when the bodyguard reached in, scooped the PM up in his arms and sang, and I will always love you. <laughs> the Prime Minister wouldn't have had low blood sugar in the first place, but the guards kept throwing themselves in front of his licorice bullets. <laughs> A few red faces in Kazakhstan, too, after it was discovered the country's central bank had misspelt the word bank on its banknotes. <laughs> the notes are a mess. They also misspelt central, legal tender and bazillion. <laughs> Sadly, when they tried to sack the people responsible, the letter of dismissal fired them from the Kazakhstan central bonk. <laughs> In Japan, Toshiba has come up with a new gadget which will give you a fully realistic 360 degree view of your TV or computer screen. <laughs> and it's virtually undetectable. <laughs> and with a 360 view, instead of watching the crap actors on Australian soaps, you can look in the other direction and watch the producers jumping up and down with bags of cocaine and recording contracts. <laughs> At this point, they're one size fits all. Sorry, Bert. <laughs> but the main problem is your couch only faces one direction. So to get the most out of it, you're going to need one of these. <laughs> Congrats! <laughs> All right. Hi. Playground news, Wedgie Will. Schools in the US are banning kids from playing tag because their scared children may get hurt and their parents will sue. <laughs> these kids tagging? <laughs> these schools are tough. Kids who play Chasey are getting knocked out and kids who play Kiss Chasey are getting knocked up. <laughs> For safety reasons, and this is true, the schools have ordered children to invent a new no-contact version of tag. And high-velocity sniper rifles don't count. <laughs> Surely it's not the tagging that's dangerous, it's the running around. Can't they just stand still and take turns touching each other? <laughs> It'll come in handy for high school. <laughs> Plus, these are American children. If they fall over, they might pop. <laughs> still don't feel too bad for them. Now they aren't allowed to play tag, they'll just go back to what all other American kids do in the playground. Selling crack. <laughs> Week. Oh, I'm angry. Oh. You know, the ABC are paying someone $280,000 to check the programs for political bias. They haven't got much money now, they're going to afford that. They'll have to axe some of the shows. <laughs> then once they axe the shows, there'll be nothing to check anymore. <laughs> Seriously, it's a lot of money to pay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, and the government wouldn't be happy about it. They wouldn't want the ABC 
is he spending money on people to make sure that other people don't hang shit on them? <laughs> An election coming up! <laughs> That's madness! <laughs> Seriously though, I'm gonna take this opportunity to say, I need a job! <laughs> Supermarket! <laughs> Happy to do anything. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Joining me, Corinne and Dave, to throw some stones in the glass house tonight from the Fox Breakfast Show in Melbourne, the guru of the gossip, Adam Richard! <laughs> Victorian Father of the Year, the Energizer Bunny of Australian Athletics, Steve Monaghetti! <laughs> All right, movers and shakers. First up, a new study from the UK says Britain is becoming a nation increasingly scared of its young people. Two-thirds of British adults suffer from pedophobia, a fear of children or a fancy word for why I use a condom. <laughs> <laughs> British children are so scary when a couple of blokes get into a fight, the loser threatens to run home and tell his kids. <laughs> the coloured ballroom at Ikea has bulletproof glass. <laughs> Department store Santas have replaced their elves with Hell's Angels. <laughs> Michael Jackson hasn't toured in 15 years and Gary Glitter moved to Vietnam. <laughs> Steve, you're a father of four. Are your kids scary? No, of course not. What's the world coming to? Is that, is that true? Yes. yes. Well, yes. They got, who writes that stuff? Are they well, your you're, kids? You're not scared because you can run away from them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. I haven't been home. That's the thing. I just, I just keep running. Yeah. That's why I'm here. How, How do you get time to have four kids then? I oh, know. That is, that is, that They're is just like little question. pit stops. Yeah, they do. <laughs> He doesn't just run fast. Is your oldest a boy or not? Is no, you, no, no, two girls. Two, two girls, girls, then a boy and then another girl. Right, well, yeah. yeah so. What about, because one time that boy might get bigger than you, you know, and be able oh, to yeah. beat you up. Is no, he's a mini-me. He will never be bigger than me. <laughs> no, it's, it's not in the rules. You're going to keep him running so he stays emaciated, are you? <laughs> <Do they? laughs> not that you're emaciated, well, you're well, fine. <laughs> I'm saying you're too thin, but there is an African guy who wants to sponsor you. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. Madonna? Yeah, yeah your seat's for sale. <laughs> I actually thought I was bringing quite good balance to the panel. That's why I thought oh, I was here. Here. fruit for four months. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fat, it's stored joy. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a vicious child, Adam? I imagine I was, you I a was, vicious child. I once assaulted my Italian teacher with a table. What? Oh, wow, what why? for? What, she had the wrong shoes to match her hand? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She was too coordinated. Oh. Everything was mauve. And it drove oh. me mental. Also, she asked me to conjugate something that I didn't care for. <laughs> <laughs> It just me to conjugate something I didn't care for, so I threw a table at her. <laughs> I was full of hormones. <laughs> I was in inner city school in Melbourne, and I used to, you know, dance on the table in the accounting class because I was hopped up on Gigi Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I once did the entire Grease Mega Mix. <laughs> it's the sort of school where you go, oh, I got my accountancy exam back, I got an E. Oh, I'll buy it off you for 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Kids are scary though, aren't they? I reckon. Kids are frightening. Yeah, yeah and they, they will really? beat you. They will beat you up, I reckon. <laughs> if, if I see a kid damaging stuff, I go, yeah, well done, you go for that. Um, <laughs> good to see you're expressing yourself, um, even if it's mine. <laughs> yeah, Seriously? bash my car, I don't care. Yeah, that willy bin looks good on its bonnet, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm scared of children. Yeah, because I'm. Be, you know the thing, like this, this, this thing was in England, yeah, yeah. Yes. in the UK. I lived in the UK when I was like about 20, and. Uh, I remember going to the shops and like there were like these kids, maybe 10, 11 years old, going, will you buy some fags? Will you get some fags from the shop? It's like, no, clearly you're tiny children. <laughs> and then they just started, I'm going to fucking punch him in the cock. <laughs> but you know, on the OK, scary children! <laughs> on the I'll give you all the cigarettes in the world! <laughs> on the upside, it was really nice to meet Kate Moss when she was little. <laughs> <laughs> Our next mover 
Andrew Shaker is evolution expert Dr. Oliver Curry, who reckons by the year 3000, humans will grow to 2 metres, live to 120 and all have brown skin. Will also evolve to emphasise features valued by the opposite sex. Men will have squarer jaws, deeper voices and larger genitals. And women will have large eyes, pert breasts and hairless skin. As well as a special compartment to keep beer cold and a built-in sports channel. <laughs> And in 100,000 years, we'll divide into two subspecies, the beautiful, symmetrical, intelligent people and the ugly, misshapen, stupid ones who'll run the place as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Dr Curry calls it a genetic hangover and says our future will be a story of the good, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> What are they going to do, virus? <laughs> Corinne, you're going to live forever. How would you like to evolve? I'm going to learn how to fly. Hi. Um, <laughs> People will see you and cry. Yeah. Uh, what a ridiculous thing that... that, that uh, no one is going to evolve like that. What, are you that, saying he's guessing? That's not... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than guessing. Women are not going to evolve so they have larger eyes and big boobs and they're hairless. That is not science. That's a wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> Go wet dream. <laughs> it's, it's, there was no science involved in that at that's all. That's what they look like at the Playboy Mansion, though. Yeah, but that's a lot of silicone. That's yeah. not genetics, that's silicone. We're all going to be dead anyway, really, though, aren't we? We're not going to be We are. We won't be here in 100,000 years. chance. Mona's might still be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm wearing this sucker out, Mona. <laughs> it's fading away to nothing. I'm just going to disappear. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to be nothing. Yeah, you're going to run into the uh, mist. That's my thing. <laughs> no, I think we should, shouldn't we all, I don't know, what I, I need a bit of speed, I need a bit of coordination and a good golf swing. That'd yeah. be good, oh, wouldn't really? it? Yeah, because yeah. then, then I could play some other sport. Mm. Be good at that. Problem is that other golfers would keep picking you up and trying to use yeah. you. As a... <laughs> yeah. That's it, I went to get the ball out of the first hole and fell in. <laughs> So they men are going to uh, be more well endowed. I mean, yeah, why? How? Yeah, I mean, how's, how are you going to evolve? How's that going to evolve? I mean, I mean, you girls, I mean, you can't tell, can you? Before you marry someone? No, you would... <laughs> what, are you using a prosthetic? <laughs> no, because you only, like, yeah, you never only have more than one partner, do you? Yep, all right, no, you do that. Is Dave and Holly are waiting for that special guy? <laughs> <laughs> Poor oh, Holly. <laughs> it's going to be one hell of a night. Yeah. Oh, I don't think right. he's using a prosthetic. I think he's using a pathetic. Our favourite movies and shakers come from the US where a new study has found the best food to perk up your sex life is cheese. This may finally explain what the holes are for in Swiss cheese. <laughs> It also explains why fondue was so popular at those swinging 60s parties. <laughs> hey, would you like to dip your cabanossi in my molten cheddar? <laughs> Come on, who hasn't overindulged in a cheese plate and woken up with a stranger? <laughs> the boffins discovered cheese contains more of the love drug of phenylethylamine. Fuck. <laughs> phenylethylamine. Phenylethylamine. Why the fuck make a word that long? <laughs> That is a good pie. Yeah. I reckon that, it's phenylethylamine. Phenylethylamine. <laughs> I love that you're you teaching Hughesy how to be funny and me how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was a teacher, but I didn't have him in my class, I'm telling you. Well, in a minute, you might be teaching him how to make out with blokes. But, uh, it's a... Oh, I need no lesson. <laughs> Boffins discovered cheese contains more of the love drug, phenylethylamine. <laughs> I'm going to leave this and go on to some science program. Yeah. <laughs> Probably shouldn't just be that happy when I get a word right. <laughs> when I drive to work, I get to lick the windows on the bus. That's weird, because you're driving to work as well. <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> 
Phenylethylamine. It also occurs in red wine and chocolate. So you'll be looking for love, but you'll be fat, pissed and spotty. <laughs> And guys, here's a tip. If you don't have the real thing, cutting the cheese doesn't count as romantic. <laughs> Adam, you're a sexy beast. Does soft cheese get you hard? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think it's true, because, like, you know when you get drunk mm. and you get, like, towards the end of the night and there's only two things you want, and that's a toasted cheese sandwich and a hand shandy. That's it. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> the use of the word hand shandy. <laughs> That's the most polite way I could think of putting it. Because <laughs> there's generally no one else there. Uh... What do you have? Do you have a chaser with that? <laughs> I think your chaser, your, your chaser's called, it's called a tissue. <laughs> oh, God, it's handy for getting the cheese off your hands. <laughs> yes. Do you know, I once, I once slept with a cheese expert. Wow. I know, fully, a cheese expert. What, like, was this just someone yeah. who ate a lot of cheese? No, <laughs> no, 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 he works in like a... He's a uh, cheeseologist. Cheese, 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 cheese anomalist. Was, my brother's a cheese maker, it wasn't him, was it? <laughs> no. your, brother is a, your brother is a cheese maker. He makes cheese. Is he really horny all the time? <laughs> well, he lives alone. <laughs> Hi, Mick. <laughs> you know what? My wife's allergic to cheese. Ooh. True story. No. That's true. Is that why you that run so true. much? That's it. <laughs> I'm worried. What's going on? Years and years ago, uh, my old boyfriend, my boyfriend at the time, and I went away for a romantic weekend to this, uh, like, it was Mietta's, which is like a restaurant B&B &B at the same time. <laughs> and we had, what are you laughing about? A uh, restaurant B&B. &B. Yeah, it was Is brilliant. it on the Gold Coast? No, shut up. <laughs> for dessert, I ate the entire cheese platter for two on my Ooh, own. Yeah. It was not a romantic weekend. Anyway. I just mm. lay on the bed on my back, just going... <laughs> <laughs> All night, and the next morning gave birth to a little cheese baby. <laughs> yeah, there was, it was a baby, baby mount cheese. <laughs> well, was, it baby, was it the baby cheeses? Good. I think the ABC have just re signed us on the yeah. back of that. <laughs> 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 Later in the glass house, we ask Kim Beasley what springs to mind when he hears the word faint. It'll be the first thing I do when I get into office. George W. Bush is worried it takes too long to translate his speeches into English. But I, I, I recognise the degree of difficulty of the task. <laughs> And Bill Heffernan embraces John Howard's new love of all things powered by the sun. I thought he was, as it were, speaking out his back passage. <laughs> Tonight's question on the glass house is, how would you like to die? Let's find some answers. How would you like to die? In your arms, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how would you like to die? I would love to die um, snowboarding and get hit by an avalanche. She's hardcore, extreme. <laughs> How would I like to die? Yeah. After a nice, passionate night of sex with my girlfriend. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> She could be like a spider. She could bite your head off at the end of it, yeah? Yeah, I'll have to learn how to be a black widow then, won't I? How would you like to die? <laughs> Rich and famous like yourself, Dave. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're already, like, you're famous, you're on the camera, yeah? I'll give you a hundred bucks, you'll be rich. Uh, eaten by a vegetarian. Eaten by a vegetarian? I like it. So you don't like vegetarians, I imagine, yeah? It taste very good. All right, how would you like to die? Watching reruns of The Glass House. Good on you, yeah. yeah. My bits in particular, yeah? Absolutely. Ah, oh, we're really winning tonight, aren't we? <laughs> how would you like to die? I don't know, having sex or something. Having sex or something, I think. <laughs> having sex, I think we'll just do with that, yeah. yeah. Having sex. With, with, with anyone in particular? Uh, no. Are you here with a partner? Yeah, my husband. Oh, well, we'll say him. <laughs> For the sake of a happy relationship. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wanted to die while you were having sex with him? Well, I haven't wanted to, no. Have you, ever, like, have you ever had sex with him and wished you were dead? <laughs> well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> In 
puzzling news for punters. The death of Farlap is back in the news with more theories about who or what killed Australia's greatest racehorse. And in the interest of non-bias, I'd like to say that Farlap was a shit horse and I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> There are lots of theories, an accident, poison, the Mafia, or maybe it's just what happens when someone becomes famous and goes to America. A few people claim Fartlap was found in bed with a couple of Vegas hookers. <laughs> or maybe it was natural causes at the time he hadn't been well. Apparently he had the trots. <laughs> trots. <laughs> Baby Jesus. Husey, I'd like your help. I want you to be the legendary race horse and we're going to interview you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Still looks a lot more natural than Warney's hair, doesn't it? <laughs> First question, Dave Lapp. How are you going? How am I going? Yes. Uh, considering I've been dead for about a century, yeah. <laughs> Never been better. <laughs> Before you um, died, did you, did you father any other horses? Uh, I'd like to think so, yeah. A little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem with that. Um, yeah, didn't you have your, uh... Yeah, they cut my knackers off, so, uh, <laughs> I really wanted to father some horses, but I tell you what, it's not a bad one with the chicks, yeah. <laughs> you're, a New you're a New Zealand horse. Shh. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering where your accent's gone. Oh, I'm not really, um, I don't really want to be, no. <laughs> a little bit ashamed, Russell Crowe. <laughs> You be. Do you think um, too much emphasis is now placed on, like, you know, say the fashion and the hats at the racing, or do you just desperately want to wear a fascinator? Uh, yeah, very good point. Um, yeah, there's a lot of long fl young floozies at the races, and really, they should have some self-respect, you know. And, um, you know, a lot of, I mean, some of the girls there look like, you know, what, I mean, tell you what, bloody hell. You know what, if you look like a horse, don't wear a dress. You know? <laughs> I didn't realise that Farlap was not only a champion racehorse, but a radical mufti. <laughs> How do you feel about spending eternity stuffed and mounted on public display? Oh, that's the only way I can get hard. <laughs> Oh, you lose your testicles and see how you feel. A couple of jokes like that gets me by. Um, yeah, no, I'm not happy about it. Yeah, it's freaks. I'm exposed out there, aren't I? Yeah. What really. about your, your name? I mean, I'd be... You're disappointed they didn't spell it right. I mean, you've had to put up with that... that what do they call those blended words? Why didn't they just use an F? Uh, well, you know, I mean, a lot of people have interesting names, and you know what, I mean, you know... But it's I mean, a spelling mistake, and it well, bugs it's, me. It's, well, it's all right. Good on you, all right? Go for a run and relax. Um, I can run faster than you, I can tell you. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. OK. But, so you should, but I've still got my testicles, so up yours. <laughs> My wife's not allergic to cheese. <laughs> not actually married. <laughs> You're a horse. I'm a horse, but if I had a wife, she'd be a cheese-eating bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not only is he a radical mufti, but a gangster rapper. <laughs> Um, what about the cup? I always think it's unfair to give racehorses a cup as a prize because you can't hold a cup. What would you prefer as a prize? Ah, uh, me testicles. <laughs> 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 well, that's the way it is for Wednesday, November the 8th. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Thank Adam. You. <laughs> All right, nice, nice job. And don't forget. 29th of November at the special time of 9 p.m. The last glass house ever will be the 2006 Awards for Excellence. Oh. It's turned into a pantomime. Yeah. <laughs> He's behind you. <laughs> this week for your voting pleasure. Outstanding excellence in entertainment and the nominees are the big brother Bogans who proved it takes a turkey to slap a turkey. <laughs> Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes and their oddly hairy baby Suri, who seemed to be born age two. <laughs> Dopey George Michael, who really shouldn't bong bong before he drive drives. 
<laughs> and Rolling Stone, Keith Richards, who didn't lose his grip while climbing a palm tree to gather coconuts, he was drunk, sitting on a tree stump, and fell off. <laughs> abc.net.au slash glasshouse or SMS A, B, C or D to 1974 7747 for your chance to win one of ten copies of the Glasshouse DVD. Yeah. Five years of our pain on one very special disc. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You've only got seven days to vote, so pull your finger out and press it to the keyboard of your choice. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. According to the Fin Review, Australian con man arrested in Fiji. But I'm the foreign minister, says Downer. <laughs> USA Today has evangelist caught with male prostitute. Just some Sodom and Gomorrah research. <laughs> the Hobart Mercury claims Phillip Island short on drinking water. Used it all in Grand Prix wet t-shirt competitions. <laughs> in the Globe and Mail, Saddam wants switched to firing squad. The bullets are with my weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> And from the age, I didn't axe Glasshouse, says Howard. And they would have been axed twice under Labor. 